Guitar and Excel, spreadsheet creation mapping the path to fretboard enlightenment, part number five. Get ready and don't fret because the board's been fretted so you don't have to be. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you're using a blank worksheet, you might want to begin back there. If you do have access, currently five tabs down below. Example tab, the start point tabs, the blank tab, the example tab being the end product, the finished work, in essence, the answer key, the start points represent the different start and stop points that will line up to the video presentations as we work through this long practice problem. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and are continuing on that worksheet at this time. Let's give a quick recap of what we have done thus far. We've looked at our musical alphabet and we listed it in a column format starting with A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, E, and of course there's 12 notes in the musical alphabet. We numbered those notes both for help with our Excel table, but also because the numbering is a great memorization tool as we will see as we construct this, the next part of our project. So we then took both of those items with a nice Excel formula here, and then we also created our fretboard then. So we listed the strings, lowest string or the, the, the lowest pitch string, the thickest string, one closest to the ceiling on top and then on down. And we listed the notes in terms of numbers as well as the numbers and the letter of the note. And so then we also put together our table here where we're now looking at a specific uh, a specific scale. So in this case, we're going to start with C because that's typically the place to start because it doesn't have any of the sharps and flats uh, because I believe that's kind of the scale that Western music basically started around. So it's the scale that doesn't have any sharps and flats, but the formula is the same for any major scale, which is going to be whole or two notes, whole or two notes, half, whole, 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 two note, two note, two note, half. So if we use that formula and we think of the notes as numbers, absolute numbers, then we could say, well, if four represents a C, then if I go two notes, notes up, I get to a six, and then two notes up, I get to an eight, one note up, I get to a nine, and then two notes up, I get to an 11, and so on and so forth. And then we can show that in terms of the, the number and the letter. And we can also look at the intervals now that we're using these numbers for notes between each of the notes in the scale now compared to the uh, root note. So just remember that when we're looking at these numbers, it can obviously get a little bit confusing because we're using numbers for multiple different things. But oftentimes the numbers that we usually hear, I would call relative numbers, meaning they're relative to a scale. So this, if I'm talking about C as four or C being the root that we are working in, and I'm calling that the one of the scale, the one means that that's the relative position to the scale. The four represents the fact of an absolute number which doesn't change, meaning if you were to number the notes from one to four starting at A for one, it would be four. So four doesn't change. It's an absolute number. It is what it is, just like C doesn't change. Numbers like the, the first number one note in a scale will change, because right now it's a C, but I could say I'm just gonna do the same thing with a D, right? Which would be a six. Now the one note is relative because we're saying it's the one note in the scale of D. All right, so keeping that in mind, what we're gonna do now if I look at the example tab is we'll use that information to create our table that will look like this and then a table that will look like this. And this will give us a lot of information uh, such as the distance between the notes. It'll give us our scales. It'll tell us what kind of chord that we can play, whether it be major or minor. It'll tell us the notes in the chord. So this is really the heart of a lot of the stuff that can be quite useful when practicing the actual guitar because you can line this information up to the actual fretboard and try to figure out what you're actually playing, which could be quite useful. Let's go to the blank tab and start on that. So I'm gonna make a skinny AJ. I knew an AJ that was skinny. Wasn't there a TV star named AJ? Was really a skinny, a skinny guy. 
Anyways, so this is going to be major, major slash Ionian. We're going to say this is the one note from R major, which will make more sense once we get into some of the nodes, noting that the major scale is kind of the home base scale in Western music. If you were to give it its Greek name, as all the other modes are named, its mode name is a Greek name of the Ionian scale. So you can call it the major scale or the Ionian scale, the home base scale in Western music. Next header, relative scale intervals from chord root. Now this will make more sense once we start to populate that. And then we're gonna say the next header is gonna be the absolute intervals from root. And this is getting a little bit confusing, right? Because now we've got these different intervals involved. We'll talk about them as we build this. And then we've got the chord scale intervals. All right, so I'm going to make this large right now so we can see those names as we build it. And then later, I'm going to shorten that up so that you can look at it if you want to, but we'll we'll uh, tighten it up for uh, room's sake. All right, so then we're going to also need the Greek alphabet down below. Let's actually list first. Let's list one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, these are going to be the notes in the scale. We're going to start building the C scale, but we want to build it in such a way that it can change if I was to change this one key uh, to anything else that we want to change it to. But no matter what we do, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes, and then it's going to go back to one or eight as it starts over. One here representing the relative one note of uh, the scale that we're talking about, the major scale in this case. So then the next thing we want to do is be able to indicate once we build these scales, whether or not we would want to be playing a major chord around it or a minor chord around it. We'll talk about how to construct those, but we usually show that with Roman numerals. So we can use a Roman numeral construction here. Formula for that in Excel is equals Roman and then I'm going to say uh, brackets. So there's the there's the function we want. I'm just going to point to that number. So it's going to take that number and it's going to convert it into a Roman numeral. So th there we have it. Now I'd like to copy that down. So I'm going to copy it down. So now we have our related Roman numerals. They look redundant, but there's something with the Roman numerals that's fancy because a lot of times if it's a if it's a small Roman numeral, a lowercase then that means that you you're going to have a minor instead of a major so how can now i got to say well how can i make these lowercase roman numerals with our fu function and there's a fairly intuitive way to do that i can go into this one and i'm going to put in here i'm going to say lower and then so now i've embedded in front of it that lower i got to put brackets around the whole thing and so now I really have two functions, the lower function and then the Roman numeral embedded, and that'll make it a lower case. So I'm going to do that for the two. I'm going to do it here, lower here, make that a lower case. And then the six, I'm going to make this lower. So I'll say lower, boom, boom. And then this one is diminished. So I'm going to make it lower and put brackets around that. And then you, you also might want to put something else around it. So we could use something completely different to indicate that that's going to be a diminished, but it has like a minor third to it. So uh, we'll say, let's try to put like a dot next to it so we can indicate that that's the, that's the diminished. So I'm going to double click on it. How can I add like another thing here? I can use a text I can tie it to and and then add my text. When I add text in Excel, you need to put quotes around it. So there's a quote, period, and then end quote. So that might not be the most technical musical way to do it, but that gives me my indication that's kind of like a minor, but then it's got the diminished for it. Now we can think about, well, what does that actually mean? Well, that'll make a little bit more sense once we start to build, uh, build this thing. So we're gonna say we're on the scale notes let's do that first so here's the one two three four five six seven now over here what we had this table represents all of the notes and this table represents us pulling according to our formula whole whole half whole 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 half 
just the notes in the scale. So we're looking at these notes in the scale down from uh, four to three. So we wanna bring those over here. So what I'm gonna do to do that, we're gonna do a V lookup because I wanna be able to find this number here and tie it to this note. So it's actually gonna be an X lookup because that's the newer, latest and greatest one. So it's an X lookup and I'm gonna say tab and the lookup value, I wanna find this value comma and I wanna find it in this group of numbers. So I'm gonna say control shift down and then uh, control backspace, uh, control back, it didn't do it. Well, it should, should take me back to the top, but there's that. And then I'm gonna say, okay, then we'll say comma and then the, the return array, we want you to return the ones in here. So you're gonna find that one and return the four in this case. Let's close it up and enter. So there's our four. I wanna copy that down. So I'm gonna double click on it and anything that's over here in my table, I make absolute. So I'm gonna say that's going to be the table stuff. This one, F4 on the keyboard, 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 dollar sign before the letters and the numbers and enter. And then I should be able to copy it down. So I copy this down. And now we've got the four, six, eight, nine, eleven, one, three, which are shown here, four, six, eight, nine, eleven, one, three. And those are useful to, to memorize the numbers for like first, because those are the C, which are all of the uh, all of the non-sharp and flat notes, because we're in the key of C. So so that's good. And the reason I'm using the V lookup and not just saying equal this number is because when we get into the modes and whatnot, it might be a little bit easier to use the X lookup, not the V lookup, the X lookup uh, to make sure we're picking up the right numbers. Okay, so then I'm gonna say, all right, well, what, what now if I'm on this chord, I'm going, that's a, that's a I, so I'm gonna build basically, it's a large I or an uppercase one, which indicates it's going to be a major chord. How do we build the major chord? I'm actually gonna make this black. Let's make this black and white. Let's do some formatting font group. Make this black and then white. And let's make all of this black and white. Black, white. And then let's make this one a little bit smaller. And we can make this one a little bit smaller. And so it's gonna go out like to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It should be seven, of course. One two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's make all of these a little bit smaller so that we can see them more easily over here. Okay, so now we're going to pick up the notes. Now, when we pick up the notes, what we do is we just basically pick up every other note. So note what happened here. We had all of our notes over here, 12 notes. We picked seven of them according to our whole, whole half thing to build our major scale. And now all we're gonna do is go around our major scale at each of these starting points, the number one note, and pick every other note. Because when the notes are too close together, you kind of get that dissonance sound. So it kind of sounds good. Now that we have our scale, everything should sound good on the scale, but we usually wanna skip every other note to build our chords. So that means that if I start at four, it's gonna be four, skipping a note to eight, skipping a note to 11. That's gonna be the, the notes that we will be pulling in. So I could think of that in terms of the intervals. So, so I could say, all right, that means if I look up here, I'm gonna say it's gonna go zero intervals for the first one. Actually, I'm gonna put that over here zero intervals for the four or C, and then it's gonna go up two, and then the next one goes up another two intervals, which will be four, and then it's gonna go up another two intervals to six, so I can see the pattern here, and I'm gonna pull this out till I get to 12. So that's why this is going to be the relative scale intervals from the chord root. In other words, there's four, I'm gonna go up two, two not notes, but notes in the scale, right? I'm not talking about absolute notes. I'm talking about the notes in the scale. All right, so how can we do that with a formula down here? We could say, all right, that means then 
Note that I cannot just say this is going to be 4 plus 2 because that would be talking about kind of absolute distances. What I need to do is say, hey, look, this is the one note in the scale, which happens to be a 4 or a C. And I'm going to go up two notes in the relative scale positions from note 1 up to, to note 3 in this case. And note 3 is going to be an 8 uh, or an E. And so notice I can't just count up two notes because I'm not using all of the notes in the musical alphabet. We're in the scale. We're counting up relative to the scale now. So how can I do that with a formula over here? I can say this is going to be equal to the X lookup. And then I'm going to say the lookup value is going to be this one plus the two. One plus the two and then comma. And then the lookup array, I want to find that number in here, which is the relative scale positions that we want to be picking up and then comma the return array i want you to put that or give me the value in numbers over here and we'll talk about adding the letters at a later time so if i say enter then we get an eight that's what we would expect because relative position one here is a four going up two notes is an eight and then we're just going to do that again we're going to go up another two notes and get up to the 11 another two notes and get up to or, or to a three but we need to get a little bit fancy to copy this over. So if I go back in here, I know this. I know that these two, I don't want these two things to move. So everything that's in those arrays, I could say F4 and then F4 and then F4 and then F4. So now we've got those that are not going to move the arrays when I move it to the left or the right. Now, this one, notice that this cell right here uh, represents this number what I would like it to do is be able to move down, but I don't want it to move to the right. So that means that I want to keep the, the letters here flexible, but I but I I actually I want to keep the letters inflexible. So I'm going to put a dollar sign before the letter and I want the number uh, to be flexible because I want it to move down. So that's what we call a mixed reference now, not two dollar signs, but just one dollar sign on this one by contrast, however, we want to allow it to move to the right, but we don't want it to move down. So we need then a dollar sign before the number so that we can easily copy this both to the right and down. So I'm going to say, OK, let's say enter. And so now let's check it out and see if that works. If I put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it to the right, is it doing what we expect? This one is picking up the next one in the series, right? What would we expect to happen? every other note that's what we want from starting from four it'd be four to eight that's eight right here and then eight two notes up to eleven and then two notes up to three and then two notes up to six and then two notes up to nine and then two notes back to a one here so that looks like it's doing what we would uh expect then so when we think about the note intervals in a scale then we name them typically a one a three, uh, a five, a seven, a nine, 11, and 13. And all that means, all that we're doing is saying that we're, we're starting on the one note, which in this case is uh, a C. So when we talk about a chord, then we're going to go up in the scale uh, to the three note in the scale. So the three note and then uh, the five note. So these three notes are usually the major three notes that we're going to be working with and they could be either major or minor if we're talking about a major scale or minor scale now notice when we look at the intervals between here we're, we're thinking about every other note as we pick these up relative to the scale that we are in that means that the absolute distance between these these things will actually differ so in other words uh the the distance from one to three here might differ when I get to the minors, it will differ, right? And so that's why we also might want to have the absolute distances between intervals. So then we can we can actually think about it in terms of the entire, everything on the fretboard, that'll make it easier to kind of see where we are rather than relative to a scale. If it's relative to a scale, we have to count up the scale instead of just counting up the frets on the keyboard, which sometimes is an easier thing to do. So, so we might then say, all right, well, is there a way that I can show the absolute intervals between these two? Well, if they're numbers, there's a way we could just subtract them, right? So I could say the first one, I'll just say zero, but then I could say, if this is note eight, 
which is an E, minus note four, then there's an actual four note distance, which we call two whole steps when you're talking whole steps, half steps. So there's a four note distance there and, and, uh, and we could see that. Now I could copy that across. I could take this one and say, this is this minus this, but uh, we're going to run it. We're going to run into problems where, where if we get a result, that's going to be greater than 12, for example, or, or greater than uh, so, or less than one, if we subtract these out, for example, if I subtract this three minus the eight, I'm going to get a negative number. So we have to use another fancy uh, logic function, which is going to go something like this, if, if, and then brackets, and then I'm going to put another brackets, and we want to take this eight minus the root of four. If that is greater than zero, then comma, what do we want to do? I want to take the eight minus the four. And then what do we want to do if it's less than zero? It's a negative number. I'm still going to take the eight minus the four, but if it's negative, I'm going to add to it another 12 because if it's a negative number, there's 12 uh, notes in the musical alphabet. If I add 12 to it, it should get us back to the positive number, which should be correct. Brackets around it to close it up and enter. The four looks correct. I'd like now to copy it to the right, but to do so, I want this number to move as I copy it, but not this number. So I need to make an absolute reference of this number, which is in, co in uh, column AM. So there's the AM column. I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute. Here's another one, AM, F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute. Here's another one, AM, F4 on the keyboard, dollar signs before the letters and numbers and enter. Then let's test it out, putting our cursor on it, fill handle, dragging it across. And it looks like it's doing what we would expect. So we've got a zero, four, seven, 11, two, five, and nine. Now note, these are just showing the intervals from the root for just this first uh, chord. So when we get to the other chords, what we can do is try to say, is it the same interval or is it different than the intervals from the root? And that, that helps us, helps me to kind of uh, think about what is going on with these absolute intervals. It'll make more sense, hopefully, once we start playing with it. I know it's a little abstract when we talk about it right now, like this way, but let's keep on going for the next one. And so now I'm gonna copy, this one is, is doing the X lookup. So if I copy this one down, it's gonna be the six to the nine. So that looks correct. And if I copy this one across, just to kind of double check it, now we're saying we're starting at the six, right? And we're just going up every other note if this was our six. So now we're gonna go six, uh, two notes up goes to the nine, and then two notes up goes to the one, two notes up goes to the four, two notes up goes to the eight, two notes up goes to uh, the 11, and then the three. So that looks correct. Notice this is why we had to put our notes in here two times over at least so that we can keep counting up uh, the scale because it's gonna basically repeat. You can also think of it as like a circle when you're trying to count these two notes up because it keeps on repeating or goes around in a loop. We'll create a circle format of it in a future presentation. So if I do that again, if I say, okay, let's bring this one down and then copy it across. What are we doing? We're starting at now the 11 in our scale and we're going uh, two notes up to the three, two notes up to the six, two notes up to the nine, two notes up to the 11, two notes up to the four, and that's, what, that's what's pulling in. Let's do it here. We're now on the four, pulling this across, and we're now gonna say, okay, we start on the nine this time. Here's a nine, and then I'm going two notes to the one, two notes to the four, two notes to the eight, two notes to the 11, two notes to the three, two notes to the six. And then let's do it again, starting at the 11 and copy that across. And so now we're at the 11. We go uh, two notes to the three, two notes to the six, two notes to the nine, two notes to the one, two notes to the four, and then two notes. And notice my table's not long enough over here. That's why I should have had at least two more. I'm gonna add some space down here, selecting these two. I'm gonna bring it down to 24 so it copies over Let's bring it down to 
24. That's what I originally had just to be safe. So bring it down to 24. I think that's further than we need to go. But now I need to adjust my tables up top again. So now I'm going to go into this one. Let's go into the second one here and see now notice that my tables aren't extending all the way down on the arrays. So I'm going to pull this all the way down and then this all the way down. And I'm on this second one because that's showing this two added and I didn't adjust the first one to do the same thing. So I'm going to say enter should have the same number. I'm going to copy it to the left. So now the, I have a uniform formula all the way across, copying it to the right again. Now copy it down and we should be good. Now I'm going to copy it all the way down to the bottom and everything looks like it's populating properly. All right, so then I'm going to make this the headers. I'm going to make this black and white. I'm going to make this black and white up top and I'm going to make this black and white. And then I'm going to put some borders around this bit, font group borders. Now I'll talk a little bit more about these intervals and stuff uh, once we build the second part of this next time, which is going to be this time. And if there's any errors, I'll try to pick them up because we're going kind of long. So now we'll, we'll add the letters. And I think the letters will be a little bit uh, useful, helpful when we start to think about what does this, what do these intervals mean? What are the, what are the things we're looking at here? So we'll talk about that more once we do the next step and build uh, the same table with the letters in it.